T.C. Boyle is one of America's most prolific and inventive novelists, the author of 20 works of fiction. He sat down with me at the Times and we had a talk about his career, his interests, his new novel, The Women, about Frank Lloyd Wright and the women who loved him, a book partly inspired by the Frank Lloyd Wright house that T.C. Boyle himself has inhabited for 16 years. Tom Boyle, tell me why you like giving readings and doing interviews like this. Not many novelists as distinguished as you are would confess to that. Well, Sam, it's because I'm a natural born ham. Don't forget, <laughs> I used to front my own rock and roll band. Uh, I love to perform um, uh, from my work. I don't call it reading. I call it a performance because reading... That's what has Dickens the, did perform, it, right? It has the connotation of, you know, school and boring and, you know, p kids read books today uh, because they're a required assignment in school. I don't know if they read books outside of school because they're subversive and they're fun. You know, as much as we intellectualize our literature, really, it is an entertainment. All art is an entertainment at root. You know, it's, it's not a homework assignment. It's not something boring. So I love to get out on stage and give a show, especially for um, high school kids that might be in the audience. And you just give them a good show and they enjoy it and they think, you know, this literature sh stuff, it, it, it ain't that bad, really. Well, let's talk about the women. It's a novel in many ways about architecture, the architecture of the work itself. It has an unusual uh, time sequence. It moves backward in time. But it, at the center of it is Frank Lloyd Wright and the many women in his life. But you have a personal connection to Frank Lloyd, right? Maybe the closest anyone can have. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and I have to fess up, Sam. Yeah, I, we, I live in his first California house, and I've lived in it for 16 years now. And I'm happy to be there. And when I moved in, I knew something of Frank Lloyd Wright. But one of the beauties of what I'm doing is whenever I want to find something out, I write a book about it or a story about it. And uh, I'd been brooding about this one for a long while. But you also did a lot of research. You said book, your own books are not homework, but you did some homework for this one. You had all the oh, of biographies. Course. Of course. Um, you studied the life closely. You studied the architecture closely. Yes, I did. And it, but it was a, uh, a delight. It was something I wanted to know about because of the house that I'm living in. Um, the figure I've heard is there are something like a thousand books have been written about Frank Lloyd Wright and his architecture. The thing I didn't know was what a cult there is around this man. Uh, it's astonishing. And yet you capture that cult to some extent, the feeling of the, the cult that surrounded Wright in his own time, particularly the women in his life. What was it that attracted them to him? You know, as a satirist, of course, I'm always looking at the, um, the underside of the icon, even though I admire him greatly. Um, I'm always worried about, uh, and this is in a, li in a line of succession of other books I've done, uh, The Inner Circle about Alfred C. Kinsey. And, the Road to Wellville about John Harvey Kellogg. Um, I'm worried about gurus. You know, I, I grew up here in America in a free society doing and saying anything I want. No one has ever said no to me, you know? And so I'm very distrustful of, um, of gurus, of people who say, come to me and I will absolve your sins. Give over yourself to me. Um, I stand back from that. And so when I find a figure like Frank Lloyd Wright, who was incredibly... Um, magnetic. Um, I just want to see what else there was there. How, what is the effect on, on you if you give yourself up to his regime? And so the narrator, Tadashi Sato, is an apprentice. A Japanese apprentice. An apprentice. studied at Harvard and MIT. Yes, and so we have also his women uh, that um, entered into his sphere. As a, uh, as a classic narcissist, this man um, didn't really consider other people to have value except as they entered into his regime. The same was true of Kinsey and of Kellogg. Um, this kind of character really fascinates me because, of course, many novelists are like this. Not me. I'm, I'm a saint, of course. <laughs> uh, and so I, I, it's, a, it's a kind of personality that I like to explore. Uh, Tom, another question. Uh, you mentioned the sequence of novels this belongs to. You've written uh, novels about Alfred Kinsey, about John Harvey Kellogg, inventor of the cornflake. Also about, uh, there's a McCormick family yes. novel as well. Yes. The, the great Chicago uh, empire. Is there a particularly American component? Is there an American paradox in this? The guru, the empire builder in the land of the free? Is there something? Of course, of know? course there is. Um, in those times, and it's the reason I love these times of the early part of the last century, um, 
there were unexplored jungles, uh, unclimbed mountains. The world was much bigger. There were far fewer people. Um, we Americans could do anything. We could create the uh, Reaper Corporation. We could, uh, we could create great architecture. We could have a Battle Creek Sanitarium and heal the world and make everybody live forever. Um, there's a kind of uh, a snake oil peddler in, in, in all of these guys. Uh, but there's also a progressive um, uh, urge in them to, to change things. And I mean, that is uniquely American. And further, another thing that interests me about all the four figures you've mentioned here now, including the McCormicks, is that each established a society within the society, a kind of um, idyllic, uh, utopian kind of society. That fascinates me, too. What are you working on now? You've told us you've got a novel about um, a Channel Islands. Again, Sam, the beauty of this is any time I want to find out about anything, I do a novel about it. Um, in fact, the old uh, saw, uh, you know, write what you know, I, I disagree. I say write what you don't know and find something out. Thanks a lot, Tom Boyle. You're welcome, Sam.